The Mendian Honey Falls Lima Sentinel welcomes you to this edition of the Mayor's and Supervisors Weekly Update, brought to you by... Each week, our community makes history. Each week, you make history. And each week, there's only one source to turn to for the first take on history. You know what that is? Subscribe to the Sentinel right now to discover the history being made in your own backyard. The Mendian Honey Falls Lima Sentinel. More than just your news, it's your history. Hey, everybody, and welcome to this week's version of the Mayors and Supervisors Update. I'm Chris Carosa, publisher of the Mendenhoney of Falls Lima Sentinel. And each week we bring you the vast knowings of the mayors and supervisors in our community. Not that I'm putting any pressure on you guys. So let's start with Rick Milne, the mayor of Honey Eye Falls. How are we doing in Honey Eye Falls this week? Oh, we're doing great, Chris. Thanks very much. Great to see everybody as always. Um, this past week, we finally are able to say that the Hyde Park project was fully completed and uh, the road is now back open to one-way traffic. Um, the crews on the project did a, a really nice job. The results are very nice. Um, probably later this fall or during the winter months, we'll probably add some millings over the guardrail area to just further fill in that uh, embankment area. But it really came out nice and we're, we're just happy to have that road open again. So kudos to the team that worked on it. Um, things seemed to go very well this past week within the village limits at least regarding the school reopening. Uh, appreciate all the planning done by, eight, by the HFL district and, uh, and we're just really happy to see the majority of the kids back to school full time and in person. Um, please remember to take extra caution uh, and watching for children crossing the school when they're walking, crossing the roadways, I'm sorry, when they're walking to school. We do have a lot of kids that walk and uh, we just want to be extra safe. Um, and when you, you know, when you see a stop school bus, you know, you hear it from the school, but we see this all the time. People going by stop school buses when the lights are flashing, the stop signs out. Um, those are kids crossing the street, folks. So we, we just have to really you know, take those blinders off and have our eyes open and, and make sure we're stopping uh, for stop school buses. So really be looking for that. Um, the Village Board would like to thank all of the great sponsors we had for our summer concert series. And we wanna thank those who frequented uh, our Tuesday and then the Thursday shows as well uh, when we had our make updates. Um, we, we are done with the normal uh, um, show schedule now. We do have one more show scheduled for Sunday, the 25th of September from three to five at Harry Allen Park. Um, Steve Grills and the Roadmasters will be coming back in. We are planning on using the fireman's training grounds if the weather is inclement. So we're planning on a show that day one way or the other, but right now it is scheduled for Harry Allen Park. Um, we will have Johnny B's custom barbecue there as well as culinary conundrum. So we'll have some food and we're really looking to another nice uh, early fall event. Um, also, Howard Hanna Realty is working on a, uh, uh, in planning on a townwide garage sale in the Honeyway Falls, Menden, Lima areas on Saturday, September 25th, excuse me, sa Saturday, September 24th. Um, there's also going to be a few uh, craft vendors at Harry Allen Park. Um, we're not sure if we'll have any music there for that or not, but uh, we're kind of hoping that maybe this will spur some people to start thinking about the old festival on the green again and maybe get a couple people interested in saying, hey, can we resurrect that? Because that was such a nice program. But one way or the other, we appreciate Howard Hanna trying to get some activity going in our communities with this townwide garage sale. I know they've been very um, positive and we've seen them very, uh, very good occurrences of these uh, types of events in other communities. So we hope it'll be good in the Honey Eye Falls, Mend and Lima area as well. And then lastly, I just wanna say that I, I sincerely appreciate all those involved, um, specifically the Hometown Heroes banner team for the 9-11 20 year remembrance uh, memorial uh, this past uh, Saturday. Um, it's something that we want to make sure that people don't ever forget, um, you know, the occurrences of what happened and, and, uh, we just want to, you know, certainly pay homage, if you will, to those, uh, who lost their lives that, that during that tragic event. 
and we appreciate those who came out to uh, to witness this event and this remembrance. So again, thank you to the Hometown Heroes Banner team and all those involved. Thank you very much, Chris. Thanks, Rick. Uh, Saturday, September 25th is the day that you're talking about, correct, for the townwide uh, movie? Um, oh, yes. I, you know what? You're right. It is Saturday, September 25th. The Sunday concert is Sunday the 26th. Thanks. Yes. Okay. Very good. Appreciate Thanks, it. Rick. Thank you. Eileen, Scottsville. Are we scooting along in Scottsville? you got to put your mic on, Eileen. <laughs> Okay, we're still here and we're doing well. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for this opportunity. Uh, the Village Board of Trustees meeting will be held in person on Tuesday, September 14th at 6.30 p.m. at the Municipal Building. We wanna just remind people that unvaccinated attendees need, are required to wear a mask. And it is also strongly recommended that vaccinated people also wear a mask just to keep everyone safe. Some of the items coming up for discussion this week will include, we're dealing with um, the extra garbage totes at apart apartment buildings. We need to make some decisions on that. Uh, we're talking about the phone system, a phone system cloud conversion to allow for emergency phone blasts. It's one of the things we've been considering in terms of this past year and COVID, how to get information out to more people. So we're, we'll be discussing this cloud conversion. Uh, there'll be department updates. We will also be discussing can, the cannabis legislation as it affects the village. And I'll be talking about that a little more later on. And a review, we will be reviewing the historic preservation code 170-25, we had an issue in our ordinances where we had two separate um, chapters on historic preservation that were basically repetitive. So we've, we um, repealed one and are reviewing the other to make sure we've included everything. The DPW will be working on repainting the crosswalks this coming week. And also the stop sign lines will be repainted. Leaf season will soon be upon us and the DPW is getting the leaf trucks ready to go during this busy time. The DPW is also looking forward to receiving their new one ton truck. It's been a while it, with COVID, it's taken a, quite a while to get this finished but it's on its way here for final inspections. And the cost of the new one ton is covered in our 2020, 2021 budget. The old one ton will be put out for auction and the money received will be put into the DPW reserves. Um, one of the things I did wanna talk about today for our residents is the cannabis legislation that's been passed in New York State. As you know, municipalities across the state will be dealing with this legislation. There is a lot of information and hopefully, I'm gonna try over the next couple of weeks to give our residents an idea of what the legislation involves and how it affects our community. Cannabis has been legalized in New York for several years. Right now, P New York State Penal Law 222-05 makes it legal to have and use cannabis, up to three ounces of cannabis and 24 grams of concentrated cannabis for, any, for personal use for anyone over 21 years of age. The new legislation will create a regulated and taxed industry this legislation will allow for dispensaries and or on-site consumption establishments. All of this will be subject to oversight by two state agencies that will have regulations similar to those for alcohol. The two state agencies are the Cannabis Control Board and the Office of Cannabis, Cannabis Management. They will create and administer the laws. So as of April, 
they said that creating these offices would take 12 to 18 months. It may be 2023 to 2024 before retail sales can begin and 18 months after that for cultivation. So obviously this is gonna take time, but the bottom line is that individuals or organizations must obtain a license from the state to engage in cultivating, processing, distributing, delivering or dispensing cannabis and to operate cooperatives, micro businesses, nurseries, or on-site consumption sites. So the first decision we need to make as a village, as a municipality, is whether we want to allow a dispensary or on-site consumption establishment within our village limits. And that needs to be done by the end of this year. So we will be discussing that at our village board meeting. And everybody that you know, has questions are invited to come to the meeting and hear more information about this. So next week, I'll talk about the how it affects our community and the decisions we need to make for opting in or out to opting out of having dispensaries or on-site consumption establishments within our village limits. So first step, I was in my teacher mode. I went back to teacher mode. Okay, next, finally, school is back in session. It seemed to go very smoothly. But as, as Rick has said, please be extra vigilant driving in the village, especially during morning and afternoon bus runs. Speed limit in the village is 30 miles an hour. Remember, these state, and I looked them up, of New York tips for driving, sharing the road, with school buses. So remember, school buses make frequent stops. Be prepared to stop for them. Never pass a stop school bus with its red lights flashing on the right or left. For your information, the first offense will typically carry a $250 to $400 fine plus a $70 surcharge. So it's not worth it to just to get to where you're going a few seconds earlier. Watch for children who cross in front of the school bus when it is stopped. And also look for children at bus stops and those running to bus stops. And by law, school buses are required to stop at railroad crossings. So that means you're going to stop behind them. Be watching also, as Rick said, for anyone in the crosswalks. Even though we, we do bus all the students within the district, some do choose to walk. Please watch the kids in the crosswalks and stop when they are there. So that's it for Scottsville. Have a good week, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Thank you very Thank much, Arlene. Yeah, John, town of Menin, how are we doing? Are you going to go into teacher mode too? No, I, I'll I'll stick to uh, to the, to my mode, uh, which is uh, probably a little different. Uh, but uh, I enjoy always enjoy listening to Eileen because she. I, I will say, Eileen, you did a really good thing telling people what you're going to say next week. I mean, are you going to be a movie star? Because that's what movie stars do. I'll always leave you on the edge. So, <laughs> so John, how are we doing in Menden? Great, great. Again, thanks for having me, Chris. Uh, uh, just want to reiterate what uh, both Mayor Milne and Mayor uh, Hansen mentioned about uh, school being open and being very vigilant of uh, all of our uh, uh, students, school buses. Uh, you know, a lot of parents choose not to use the uh, transportation that's provided by the school at times. So there's uh, extra cars on the road uh, and you all know the, the roads that they'll be using to get to and from school every day. So we appreciate everyone's patience uh, in, in that uh, regard. Also, I wanted to mention that uh, on the 13th of September, we have a town board meeting. We have a public hearing at that time regarding, um, put these glasses on so I make sure I, uh, about uh, uh, a section of the law regarding special 
for-profit entertainment uses and events that could be held in residential or agricultural zones. Uh, the, the law would omit that from uh, those areas. Uh, once again, we would like to have our business districts fill up before we start filling up, putting events in residential and agricultural zones. So that's what that is about. I encourage anyone who wishes to attend via in person, via Zoom, or send me an email and I'll make sure it's included in the uh, record. Uh, again, all of our meetings are uh, in person at the Community Center at 167 North Main Street uh, in Honey Eye Falls. You can uh, attend via Zoom and they all are on uh, YouTube TV and uh, you can't participate on YouTube, YouTube TV, but you can watch them, uh, which is a few seconds delay or you can go back and archive a meeting from previously in the year. Uh, I presented the 2022 tentative budget to the town clerk today officially, and uh, that is uh, the process from that was that we, I will be presenting that to the town board on Monday the 13th of September. Uh, I imagine on the 27th of September, the town board will be considering any changes and moving it to preliminary status, which will create a public hearing on October 18th, and I assume that the the budget will be finalized on October 18th. So I encourage anyone who uh, wishes to, and, and that will be available on our website as of uh, after I present it to the board on Monday. So that'll be on our website on Tuesday. Welcome to look at it, come into town hall. We'd, we'd be more than happy to print you out a copy and, and uh, certainly uh, it's your money. You need to know where it's going. Uh, our budget process, uh, which I've been over a little bit before, but there are no reductions in services for 2022. We are, uh, during our budget process, we are always zero budget budgeting. In other words, we start from zero. We don't necessarily start from where we left off last year. And uh, we always do the bottom up budgeting. So we are, we, I am proposing a tax cut this year, which is always a good thing for everybody. Uh, personally, I feel that we're overtaxed in this state already. Uh, we certainly need money to operate the town, but we're only gonna ask our residents for what we really need. So we have a, just over a $5 million budget and uh, that budget is actually down as well as is the amount to be raised, which would uh, necessitate a tax cut. You really can't uh, raise more money and cut taxes at the same time, unless you uh, used a bunch of reserve money, which we aren't using any this year. So anyway, I just wanted to reiterate that to our uh, our folks about, but because we are in budget time here at the town of Menden and uh, feel free to contact me with any questions or concerns. Thanks for having me, Chris. All right, thanks, John. And Mike, Mike, are we saving the best for last or what? Absolutely, Chris. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It is that time to talk about Lima again. Uh, the Lima Ambulance will be having an open house uh, from 9 to 2 on Saturday, October 2nd, right at the Lima Ambulance facility. Uh, there will be demonstrations by different first responder groups and information. Fun for the whole family. Mark your calendar now. The Livco Walls is coming to Livingston County in 22. Nine villages nine gigundus murals are going to be installed all in July of next year. Uh, the canvas that was selected in Lima is the south side of the Ellis Block, and that is the building where Johnny B's uh, Custom Barbecue is located. Uh, applications are currently being taken from artists now to uh, do some renditions uh, according to what the descriptions are and uh, we'll see uh, how the process sort of unfolds, but uh, very excited to have the, uh, the murals going in. The Lima Town board, board voted to move the tentative budget to preliminary and set the budget hearing for October 5th. Uh, we are under cap with a 1.55% increase. Uh, we were lucky in that uh, we had pre-negotiated most of the uh, large contract purchases for salt and some of the other things, so uh, everything was able to be kept fairly low. 
The public hearing for the proposed zoning change for planned development entertainment continues on. I, we still do not have uh, input back from the planning board and uh, the uh, agricultural advisory board yet. So the public hearing will still be open at the town board meeting on October 5th. There will be a joint meeting of the Lima Town and Village Boards on the 28th of September, 6 p.m. here at the Town Hall. Uh, several items are set to be discussed, including the uh, budget for the fireworks show for July 4th of 2022. Tuesday the 14th at 7 p.m., uh, the Town's Agricultural Advisory Board will meet to discuss the proposed plan development entertainment zoning changes and the ongoing townwide water discussion. The meeting is open to the public on the third floor. And lastly, uh, we find ourselves in need of a new planning and zoning board clerk. You will see the uh, information published in the Sentinel. If that is something that uh, you think you might be interested in, please apply. And that's all I've got, Chris. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. Does anybody want to add something that they may have forgotten to say? Oh. Seeing none, I want to remind everybody, uh, we didn't have Rush on today, but we do have a report from Rush that'll be in the paper next week, as well as maybe West Bloomfield. We'll see if we can get something from them. All right, thank you everybody for watching. We're here every Sunday, Sunday at one o'clock on our YouTube page, YouTube channel and Facebook page. Yeah, I get them mixed up every once in a while. Uh, but we're done for today. So we'll see you next week. Bye-bye for now. Bye now. Imagine yourself communicating with a difference. Pandimensional Solutions helps you do this. Whether live spectator events, taped broadcasts, or real-time audience-engaging programs, you can benefit immediately from the tools Pandimensional Solutions will share with you. Do you want to make a difference? Contact us at pandimensional.com.